ก o ดิบนี่ไง everyone so yes and um, each one of us we always have something to talk about ourselves isn't it who we think we are And a lots of stories about ourselves. Who am I? I'm this kind of person. I'm that kind of person. I'm a helpful person. I'm a kind person. You know. And then we, you know, we we have lots of stories about ourselves and who who we think we are, isn't it? And the same when I was uh, before before I become a nun, when I was a lay person, I used to think that I'm a very helpful person. I'm a very kind person. I'm a very compassionate person. So I'm just become very busybody. So I just put my nose, my finger into everything, you know. So someone said, "Oh, I, I want, I, you know, I, I very helpful." Like someone said, "Oh, I want to go and learn meditation." Okay, I come and pick you up. I take you there, you know. Very enthusiastic, you know. And then because I I, I want to be like, you know. You know, be someone very kind, very helpful, and of course, I get myself into trouble as well because I've been too helpful, too kind. You know, want to do everything, try to help everybody. Then, so what? Then my my place is so full, you know, and I try to help everybody, and I find that, and I getting after a little while, I getting like like a, too much for me. That you know, I try to help everybody. I try to be kind. I try to be, you know, a, 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 a compassionate. You know, and it's nothing wrong to being kind. It's nothing wrong being helpful. The problem, my main problem is, I, 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 I being identified with this. I attach to the identity of being kind. You know, and then I think that I have to defend my my title. You know, and this is like my title. I need to defend. So. Then I I and after after a while I find it very difficult and I quite stress out because it's too much for me because and I promise someone to do it I have to do it isn't it and and then I become s like, I find it very difficult to say no and someone ask me something you know and I, can you help me this even though I'm it's quite difficult for me it's, it's a bit too much for me but I I still said yes and I become so stress out. And I, and then I realized that why why so difficult for me to say no? I just have to say no if I can't do it. So I, each time I try to say no, I still say yes. And someone said, "Can can you do this?" Yes. And I find it very very difficult because of this is how you know the sense of self you know. And I, I because at the same time I can see. Where is it coming from? Because I I haven't because the reason why I can't I can't say no because of I haven't come to a place of acceptance, accepting who I am, like you know, like come on, you know, you are not really as kind, as helpful, as compassionate that you thought, you know, it's fine, you know, but I find that it's very difficult to accept. Even even I can see that, you know, my my motive, you know, to do all this, you know, I mean, it's a kind thing to do, but the attachment is there, and I I want to please others. I want to be like, you know, I can see that, and I can see that is that 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 intention behind that, you know. Even I can see that. I find it very difficult to 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 accept that, and it takes me a while. And so difficult. Each time I still said yes, to a point that I really have to tell myself, okay, come on, just accept it. Just say, okay, I'm not that kind. So I remember when the first time I said no, I tell you, it's such a relief when I said someone asked me, you know, can you help me in this? I said no. Wow, I can tell you that moment full of joy, you know. Because you, this is how much you, 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 we carry on onto ourselves. You know, you know, you, we keep, you know, carry that burden. You know, I was so joyful when I said no, and then after that, I getting easier and easier to say no to others. So this is how because we, we not only that because we create that sense of self, the identity. It's not. I mean, it's it's okay to being far, to being kind, to being helpful. It's not that it's wrong. But the problem is, I attach to that, and I create this identity. You know, I label myself, and then I think that I have to live up to that expectation. And then not only that, and then I started to to put this onto others. 
expect others as well, you know, to, to impose our ideas on, on, on others, how others should be and become so controlling. I remember one lady, she told me that she got an adopted brother and she's, she always uh, pushing him to become a monk. You know, he said, you should become a monk and this and that. It's really pushing him. And uh, to the point that, yes, he tried out, but he, he, didn't, he didn't continue. Then because of his being very controlling and pushing him, now to the point that his adopted brother said, no, now don't talk to me about Dharma. I don't want to do anything <laughs> to do with anything about regarding Dharma, don't tell me to go to any retreat, go to anywhere, listen to Dharma talk no more. <laughs> and I, and I, I said to her, I, 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 but I really do want to make her feel bad, you know. So I just said, you know, I hope that you learn, you know. Sometimes you don't impose your ideas, what you think best for others, you know. I said, the person is not ready, you push him, it's counterproductive. And then you rip off the person opportunities to learn the Dharma, isn't it? And the person ended up like so scared. He said, don't tell me that I want to keep away, you know, no, no more Dharma, nothing. I don't want to have anything to do with Buddhism. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, you know, and I told her, I hope that, you know, you can see and you learn from that, you know, not to impose your ideas onto others. And I remember uh, about three months ago when I was in Malaysia, I was giving a talk and it's just like usual that we have Q&A, you know, session. And someone asked me a question. They said that, you know, they worry about the children because the children want to become a Christian. And because he is a Buddhist. And I look at, I look at him. I said, what's wrong with that if your son wants to become a Christian? I said, it's nothing wrong with that. I said... I said, if you want to become a Christian, fine. You know, you don't have to say that, you know, I only love you if you are a Buddhist. If you are a Christian, I don't love you. I said, you, you accept him as he is. You love him as he is, you know. I said, it's fine. Why you want to impose your idea on, onto this person, you know, that you, you should become a, a, a Buddhist, you know. You, you shouldn't become a, a Christian. I said, nothing wrong with being a Christian. When I was young, I never want to become a, I never want to become a, a, a Buddhist nun at all, you know. I, I don't like to become a Buddhist nun. I don't even have a good impression of Buddhist nun. But now I become a Buddhist nun, you know. And, and, and you know, I said sometimes it's, you, you have to allow the person to, to really, when it's ready, you know. It's natural. You cannot force, you know. Sometimes what you think is good for that person, that person might not think that it's good for them. So, we, if we really love someone, we accept the person as they are. You know, it's okay. I said your children whether want to become a Muslim, a Christian or whatever, is fine. You, you let them be. You don't have to say that you got to become a Buddhist. So, and then, and then also because of, you know, that our ideas, it create lots of suffering, you know, for ourselves and for others, you know. And, and also that, uh, 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 that uh, like 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 this lady, you know. Then I I said I, I I told her that you know I hope that you really learn, you know. So it's okay if you make mistake, you know, because she come from a good place. Her intention was good. But sometimes, like uh, the, like the Buddha said, you know, uh, compa uh, compassion and kindness without wisdom can be very destructive. It's just like the Buddha said, you know, sometimes we think that we want to help someone. Before you pull someone out, you, you got pulled in. Sometimes you're not really helping that person, isn't it? Sometimes you really make things even worse, you know. And, and let's actually talk about this, you know. It just, I just remind, it just reminds me of, there's a story about a man. Uh, he was, he was, uh, he was, uh, he, he, he was, he was reborn. He after he passed away, he was reborn in the heaven. So he went to the he went to the judgment. He went to judgment, and then they told him that you know, to be honest with you, so we have looked over your whole life. You haven't done anything particular good or particular bad, you know, and we 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 really don't know what to do with you, you know. So. 
can you really tell me that you know something that you have done that particular you know wonderful or you know something that is you know impressive then he said yeah oh once when i was a a a a a once I was uh, uh, driving, he said, back to my home, and I, I came across I came across a man. He was harassed by a group of gangsters. Then I pulled my car over, and I got a I got a bat, you know, out, and I went to the leader. And this the leader is a is a is a is a is a is a very muscular guy, you know, very big, and he got this piercing on his. His lips, you know. So he went there. He can pull his 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 ring, you know, tore it, you know, from the from the lips, you know. And he said, he he told him, you better let him off and not to bother him, you know. If not, you have to deal with me. So then then he said, wow, it's really impressive. When did this happen? He said three minutes ago. Sometimes we think that we are so kind, isn't it? We got ourselves the trouble, you know. We think that we want to help everybody, you know. So this is sometimes like this is because of the sense of self, you know. We create the sense of self. Then after that, when I come to monastic life, you know, I remember my teacher told me, he said, "I don't care who you are, I don't care how successful you were." I don't care how what is your your career, how how successful you were. I don't care," he said. If you come in here, you're nobody. I can tell you, being nobody is very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. I just feel like you know, like you've been ripped off, you know, because this is how we 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 put on layers and layers, you know, of 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 like cosmetic and clothing and cover ourselves, isn't it? And to pretend ourselves to be someone else, isn't it? And to let that go is very difficult, especially the sense of self, and you know, and. You have no choice, you know. If if you if there's there's a rules that you know if you have to you have to abide the time that you you you've been uh, you've been allocated this this job whether you like it or not you have to do it, you know. You have, you can't say no, and you know you just have to do it. And you can't choose what job you like. Of course, when I was a a a, a new anagarigas, I like to do flowers. I like to arrange flowers. And then this is how sometimes you let go something, you pick up something. And then I start to 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 identify myself. Like you know, you then you want to be a good nun, and then you want to keep all the rules. You know, be a good nun. And a, a capable nun, you know, I can sew, I can do flower arrangements. I'm really good. I'm so perfect. I'm a perfect nun. And then you try to live up to that standard, and actually, it's very tired. You know, I remember that. You know, sometimes because I've, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at that. Also doing flower ar- arrangements, but sometimes when someone else doing it, I was sitting there. I was sitting there for so I saw and irritated because they don't do it well, because I find that oh it's not balanced you know here is a bit you know off the center you know like you know when you put flowers from left and right you know you have the the mirror image you know but but they're facing one side you know you they should face both sides. Then I was sitting there sitting there looking at you know how in the monastery you have no entertainment no other things to do you know then. <laughs> Then, then everything become manifest. You know, everything is really. You know, you know, you you, you can't have any other distraction. Then you got yourself distracted. Eh? I can't sitting there and look at the flower. The more I look at the flower, I just couldn't stand. I was thinking I want to go and change the whole arrangement. <laughs> and and then I was just sitting there. And then this is how you know you become controlling. You know, when when you identify yourself, when you have the sense of self, when when you have the ownership, you become controlling. And and I actually I I I must say that I was pretty good. Actually, I really restrained myself. I really bit my tongue and I really said no 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 no. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to let it be. But was really good that I really I I got you know I pulled that through like, you know not to, not to touch you know. Sometimes you become like you know we used to say OCD you know obsessive compulsive disorder you know everything have to be right you know. And this is how because of. 
This is how we let go something and if we come to monastic life, we create another thing, you know, you, you know, another I we pick up another we create another identity for ourselves, you know. Because we, we have to hold on some to something, isn't it? So we, 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 we change, you know, to, to, to other form. And I can see that, you know, then constantly that uh, you know, that how, you know, that I and I want to be perfect. And I remember when I break the first uh vase, I was so upset with myself because I'm not allowed myself to make mistakes. I'm supposed to be perfect nun. You know, I keep all the rules perfectly, you know. And you become very, you know, stressed, you know. I remember the first verse that I, I, I broke, you know. I, I, I couldn't let it go for so long because I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I broke a vase. You just imagine how much suffering that I create for myself, isn't it? I can't let that go. Then, and I can see all this, you know. They say, and then, then, even though when you're in the monastery, because of we don't have distraction, because outside easily we have distraction, but in the monastery, you have no escape. You have to really look at yourself. You really have to face yourself, whether that, that this self that you like it or not, you have to face it. You have to look at it. It's not easy because, like uh, outside, you can you can just run away, you know, from from looking at oneself, you know. But to to really look at oneself, to face oneself, to accept ourselves, is not easy. And how in monastic life, you know, sometimes like we we put ourselves into a straight jacket, you know, we we put layer and layer of, of clothes onto ourselves, you know. Being a, a, a want to be a good nun, uh, 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 you know. So that actually, to be itself actually is suffering. To be someone is suffering. To be somebody is suffering, and being myself is not easy. You know, to come to the place of acceptance, to accepting oneself. It's just like the Buddha said, you know, in one of the teachings he mentioned about the four kinds of people in the world, he said, it's just like the four kinds of pots. He said, the first kind of pots that the pots is covered, but inside is empty. The second kind of pots is, um, is open, but it's full. And the third kind of pots yeah, is open and it's empty. And the fourth kind of uh, pots that is full and close. So he said, it's just like we have these four kinds of person in this world. The first kind of person that is, the pot is like the pot that is close but empty. He said, it's just like some monks, you know, wow, the way they walk, the way they behave, they're very really inspired people. But they haven't got the wisdom, they haven't have any realization. They have no wisdom, like inside empty. But from outside, you know, that looks really good. And as if that, oh, he's uh, someone and already enlightened, very inspiring. But this person has no wisdom. But it's just the look, you know. It's just like we pretend to be someone else. And then the second, the second type is uh, someone who is uh, open but is full. If someone maybe, you know, you look at the person, maybe the person, the way they behave is not that inspiring, you know, and maybe we think that this person, oh, it's just a very ordinary, and, but this person is a very wise person. And this person have the Buddha say have a realization, even those, you know, he doesn't, from, from, from the appearance, he doesn't look impressive or inspiring, but he is someone that have wisdom, someone that have realization, someone that you know have have uh, enlightenment, you know that they attain and maybe from the that's why we can never judge someone. It's just like we cannot judge a book, isn't it, by the cover? So he might not be looks inspiring, but he's someone that is really uh, well practiced. And the fourth and the third one is is the part that is open and is empty. There's someone that you know. So what you see and what you get, you know, that is, that, that person just, you know, not inspiring and the person also is not someone that is with wisdom and, and it's just like what you see and what you get. And the fourth one is someone is, the appearance look inspiring, the way they behave, the conduct, and they themselves is someone that's uh, 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 with wisdom, 
with a lot of knowledge and someone that with a well practice. So that's why you can see these four kind of people. Even the, even the third one is also okay, isn't it? At least they're not pretentious, isn't it? You see what you get. At least they're not pretend to be otherwise, you know. But the first one, you pretend to be someone else. Actually, it's very tiring. Just imagine you just acting all the time. It cannot, sus cannot sustain. How long you can sustain? You can't. I remember when I was in Singapore, there was a couple and I was thinking that day, I was thinking that, oh, uh, that night I bit free, you know, because in Singapore, you know, sometimes you have to give three talks in one day, morning, one talk, afternoon and night. They really squeeze you every single drops, you know. And, and that night I was a bit free. I have no evening talks that night, you know. Then I was thinking I was free. And then here come the person who looked after me. He said, oh, my nephew have, you know, uh, problems if uh, a, a marriage problem can I come to see you can can, can he come to see you so I said okay well so he came he talked to me from 7 o'clock to 11 <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and and you know he stopped because of this this and then the, and then after that you know the next day the wife came you know <laughs> After talk to the husband, talk to the wife, you know, and then the husband told me about the problem is that, that because of actually all the time, the, the, the wife is the one who, 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 who chasing after him, like really, you know, try to please him, do whatever, you know, like, but, and then he not quite interested, but because of the, the family, because of the family, uh, you know, the, feel, the family background, and then the thing that they do is really competitive. So they say, oh yeah, very compatible. They said, yeah, con two of you are very compatible. And the mother keep pushing him to marry this girl, his wife, you know. But actually, he's not quite interested. He, re he really don't really like her. But he, she tried to please him, you know, to do whatever to try to suit him. And, but actually, it's not herself, you know. She tried to, you know, to pretend to someone else, otherwise to try to please him. So eventually also he said, okay, because of the, the mother pushing, the family pushing, because both also doctors, the, the, this, this, the, the husband is a surgeon. So they got married. Of course, once they got married, you know, and then the wife will reveal herself. Actually, she's not what she, who she is, isn't it? And of course, you know, that she's, because he's the kind of very tidy person, everything has to be in order. But the wife is very messy. Like, he couldn't stand. So he keep putting up, putting up with that, you know. Then, then he said that, he, and then he told me that right from the beginning, I know that it was wrong. It was, it was a mistake. I shouldn't marry for because of my parents. I, I shouldn't feel obliged that I, I should marry her. And also, it's not fair for her. So that's why he want to divorce her because of he think that it's not fair to her as well, you know, for, for both, you know. So I know that the, the wife's still interested. The wife still try to make up. So of course I I want to tell her that you know actually your husband really not don't don't love you at all you know he just feel obliged to marry you I I mean that is what hurt her you know is is you know and then she also told me that she also very tired she been trying to live up to 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 her her husband expectation to do what he prefer her to do but it's not her you know and 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 because of. You, you can't sustain, isn't it? If you pretend to, someone, to be someone else, it's constantly you acting. And it's not you. How long you can sustain just to please the other person? So then I told her that, you know, why not you just give yourself the opportunities as well? I said, maybe your wife don't know how to, he, he doesn't know how to appreciate you. You can find someone that appreciate your, your qualities, you know. I say, you know, different people have different tastes, isn't it? Maybe, you know, your, your, your husband don't think that you, you are his, his cup of tea. You might find someone that think that, you know, that they like you, your, your, like your, 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 your attitude. Maybe the person like your personality. I said, you know, then you give yourself a chance. I said, so I tried to, I tried to let her know to ask her to, to let go. 
you know and i said it's tired as well you know you you, you keep forcing yourself to, to try to please the other person no you can last they said you know you we cannot last if we try constantly try to be someone else you know and not accepting oneself you know it's okay to be ourselves. Why want to be someone else? Why want to, to be anyone? It's just like Achan Cha said, don't try to be monk, don't try to be nun, don't try to be enlightened. Don't try to be anything. When you want to be anything, you suffer. And you try to, cons- because it's not you, it's not natural, isn't it? That's why this is our ego, a sense of self. And then because of we, we need to defend our title, our identity. And then we cannot be criticized, isn't it? If someone criticizes us, he said, no, you know. And if, if someone don't praise us, he said, we, we are not happy. Is this impossible? We cannot control other people, how people look at us, whether people, you know, we, we cannot control others not to criticize us. So in this also related to the pot, you know, there was a, a story that was a, 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 um, a lady, she's a, a photographer. So she liked to take all sorts of pictures and she went to visit her friend and she was invited to a dinner with her friend and she showed her friends all the photos that she, she has took, you know. Then she has taken and then she showed all the photos and then the friends look at the photo, wow, you have a very good camera. She was so upset. What? It's not my skill. It's my camera. And then she was sitting there, you know, with you know, eating, you know, the the the, the dinner, you know, eating there. Inside, she was filming. She couldn't let that go. She said, "It's not. It's my skill. It's not my camera. It's good." And she couldn't let that go. And the whole night, her mind go on and on and on and on, thinking about that because of the friend didn't praise her that her, 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 her skill is good. It's because she just have a good camera. That's why the, the, the picture looks good. So after they finish their dinner, they have to say goodbye. Then he then he's, oh, it's very nice that you invite me for dinner. And it's very, it was very delicious, all your food. You must have a very good pot. This is how sometimes she try. She's thinking all oh, the whole night, you know, how to give back, you know, <laughs> you know, how to set something back, you know, you know. This is how sometimes we did that, isn't it? And sometimes it's okay, you know, to be, just be ourselves, you know. We don't have to be someone else, you know. Of course, we are, you know, we make mistakes. Sometimes we do stupid thing, like I, I you know, I, I just. It's okay. Now I can laugh about it with my all my stupidity, you know, what I have done, you know. And you know, it is fine because of sometimes we, we, we find it. I remember, you know, uh, 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 sometimes like when I talk to someone, like she regretted that what she has done in the past. Then I keep telling her, I said, it's okay because sometimes no one knows. You know, we can only do, we can only, we, we, we only do what we know. I said, the same when I look back in my life, I can tell you most of the things I will do differently if now. But no turning back. And some people used to say that if I would know, you know, if I would come to practice Buddhism, I would not have married, I would not have children and the, 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 the sort of things, you know. But Sometimes you wouldn't know after, you know, we, we never, we don't know what is ahead of us until we go there, isn't it? And then we go there, we say, oh, no true road, oh, it's a pit, you know. <laughs> then we knew, you know, but before that we don't. I said, we, we, that, I said, you know, that time, you know, because we, that is what we know, that is the best we know. We don't know better. That is our level. Then we can only do what we know. I say it's okay. We make mistake. We, we maybe we, we, we do something you know silly or hurting someone. I think it's fine because of that time that we are at that level. You know that the best we know. We don't know better. So I say it's important that you we forgive ourselves. We love ourselves. It's important to be at ease with oneself. So to accept who we are is okay that we are not perfect. It's okay that we are not uh, 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 
as good that as we thought, you know, and just to be happy, to be to be ourselves, you know. Actually, just like the Buddha said, we ourselves is our worst enemy. Actually, lots of things we create, you know, ourselves, you know, because we hold on to that, you know, we think that we got to live up to that. That expectation, and then we create so much suffering for ourselves. And to to accept oneself, to love oneself as we are, love ourselves. And this is the, the the really the Buddha's path. The Buddha said, you know, like we we love ourselves as we are, no matter even though we are not perfect, even though we make mistake, you know, it's okay. So this way is this way. This is the whole path of practice. Is just like. To understand oneself, like you, you read all, most of the suttas. You know, it's all come always come back to understand your own mind, to know yourself, and actually, it's being kind to yourself. You accept who we are. Don't try to be someone else, because we try to be someone else, we suffer, isn't it? It's very tired. We constantly have to, have to, have to, have to defend our our identity, you know. And then, you know, it's just it's just very tiring, very tiring and very stressful. And this is come to a place of acceptance to accept who we are, to love ourselves. It's okay, even though I'm not perfect. So to appreciate oneself, to look at. The good things that we have done, because very easily we 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 tend to look at you know, the things that we haven't achieved. We don't look at what so far we have done, you know. So that's why this is how like, we create lots of suffering, and also that we we impose this onto others, like just now what I told you, you know, and and this is how like sometimes people think that this relationship, you know, that they try they think that you know. Even though they know that the person, the other person personality, and they think that maybe I can change that person, you know, that person will change into what I want, want him to be or want her to be. No, you be very tired, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you try to change. You know, sometimes people think that you know, actually, relationship you have to work together. You know, you have to accept each others. You have to embrace each others' shortcoming. You know, that is how. You know, it's not that I I married you. That this is your responsibility to make me happy. It's no. It's both have to work together. And it remind me of the uh, someone told me that uh, there was a, a man. He 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 took his friend back for 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 dinner, and he didn't inform his wife. He just He just brought his friend back, you know. Then the wife was still not ready. He's still in his pajamas and not ready, and the house very messy, not tidy up, you know. And and he's also haven't uh, have makeup on, you know, didn't dress up properly. And certainly the the husband turns up with a friend, and she was very upset with the husband. He said, "Why you bring someone back for dinner, and you didn't let me know early?" So that I, you know, so that I get ready, I get changed, I got makeup, and you know, I will tidy up the room. But now, you know, I'm in a mess, and then you, why you want to bring someone here for dinner? Because, and then the husband said, because my friend want to get married. This is how sometimes I have you always, you know, you know, and you always the best side, you know, to to present to the others, isn't it? Then when you get married, and then the real you, you know, reveal yourself. They say sometimes. <laughs> they say sometimes it's good to be yourself. You know, it's okay if the person accept me as they as I am. It's fine, isn't it? If they know that I'm messy, they still want they still want to marry me. Fine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and then you know, the, if the person is okay, accept the way you are, then it's fine, you know. But if you constantly, you know, try to pretend to 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 be someone else and keep con- always acting, it's very tired. It's very stressful. This is what we do in life, isn't it? And we we become very stressful. Just okay, just to be ourselves. 
it's okay to be ourselves. Even though we are sometimes a bit messy, sometimes even though we are a bit, you know, untidy, it's fine. I still love myself. It's okay to be oneself. And then you, you become more at ease and at, at peace with life. You know? Then, then, it's, you know, then we don't create more suffering for ourselves. And it's being kind to ourselves. If we can accept ourselves, we can accept others. Isn't it? We can embrace our own mistake. It's okay to make mistakes. And we all done stupid things in the past. I have done a lot of stupid things, silly things in my past. But I, I, don't, I don't hold on to that, you know, because it's already past. Because I don't know. Because, you know, only when I come, you know, we can change nothing un, until we face it, isn't it? We cannot say, if I know that, I wouldn't have done that. No, no turning back. But we just, you know, letting be, you know, it's, it's already passed, you know, it's fine. It's a process. This is how we develop our wisdom. Wisdom is come from life. Wisdom is not come from book. You don't learn that from book. You don't get your wisdom from book. Through your experience, you know. So sometimes we hit a few times, you know, the wall and then we learn. So next time we don't go there, isn't it? And then we learn, and each time we, we know we we make mistake, and then we learn. Next time you know that this is going to to lead us to suffering. We don't go there, so we know that not because in the past we don't you know. Then we go there is no true road, and there is a pit there, and the second time we don't repeat again. We learn from that. We know that this is going to lead us to suffering. We don't go there. And this is how life is a life is a process. It's not a, 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 a end product, you know. We keep, you know, learning, learning. We learn through, you know, our experience, our life experience. Then we, we become, you know, then we understand what leading the that's why the Buddha said that we have to know well what is holding us back, what is leading us forward, and choose the path that lead to wisdom. So we learn throughout our whole, whole, whole life. It's a, it's a whole learning process. Each time we learn from it. So there's no good or bad experience because we, when, whenever it's unpleasant, we identify the, this experience as bad. But it's no good and bad experience. It's just experience. But we putting the labor on you know, it's just experience. It's no good or bad. So I offer this for your Dharma reflections and may this teaching be of benefit to all of you and to this. Thank you for listening to this that who I take myself to be. So any questions or comments? Yes. Can you take the speech? Mm -hmm. Ah, good questions. Because sometimes this is a uh, this is the this is the uh, the practice is that we we uh, we can't just let go, you know. But we have to hold on to something. So that's why we the first thing the whole part of practice. First of all, you let go out of the unwholesome qualities that lead us to suffering. And, and then, because there is a causal level of this is a causal happiness, so we have a more refined happiness. So this is the teaching of all the Buddhas, that is to, 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 to abandon unwholesome, to cultivate good and purify your mind. So we, but the first of all, we have to, 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 to abandon, you know, to let go of that unwholesome qualities that, that leads us to suffering. Then we still have to hold on to something because we are not there yet. You know, it's just like it's just like we have to cross to the other side of the shore, and then we are we are using a raft. You know, so that's why we hold on to the happiness, a good. You know, we do good, we wholesome qualities. We are good. We doing good. You know, practice. 
meditation, you know. So we still hold on to this happiness. But eventually, that we have to go beyond good or bad. But before we go on to, before we go beyond, we still have to hold on to something that is wholesome, good. So eventually, this is a gradual training. Then you practice. Then when you have that wisdom and we develop that wisdom, then only you'll be able to really see itself. There's nothing in the world you can hold on to, then only you can let go. You cannot just say, let go. If you just let go, you sink. <laughs> so that's why a lot of people use a lot of willpower to, to, to the, 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 where the practice using lots of willpower, to, a lot of force. And it's counterproductive. Actually, we, we reinforce the sense of self. Uh, it's a gradual training. It's like we let go, we let go the causal happiness, we hold on to a refined happiness, you know, then we got more and more refined. It's just like a ladder. So it's a gradual training. We cannot just say that we let go, we can't do that. So is it make sense to you or answer questions? Yeah. Can I say something, Ajahn yes. Asapana? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ajahn Asapana, there uh. is a Buddhist saying, you know, uh. Uh, patience. Tolerance and understanding uh. are the highest virtues. Uh. You got, got it? Yeah. yeah. You know, that there are certain situations whereby when we meet, which is unpleasant, mm -hmm. which we just can't walk away, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. a family or, or mm -hmm. at work, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of practicing patience, tolerance and understanding? You know, knowing mm -hmm. that the situation is impermanent. I it's say this mm -hmm. because I use this a lot. Mm -hmm. And so this also is also come back to your wisdom, your understanding. Sometimes without wisdom, we have people like I, I have someone, you know, can uh, want to. Oh, I want to practice a patient. I want to to overcome, you know. And then they sit in the caravan forty degrees and sit there, you know. I want to meditate. I want to overcome. <laughs> I mean, this is really crazy, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you don't find for looking for. Looking for difficulties, you know, but it's sometimes and yes, when in, when we are we are we are in a certain situations that you know we can't change anything about it, you know, we can't we can't do anything about it. Then we we, we practice patience and endurance. It's just like the, the like Achancha said, you know, you don't practice patience that you try to go close to the fire and the, the stove. There you say, I I practice patience. Yeah, I mean, you don't find for, 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 for trouble or difficulties, isn't it? But when you're in that, you know, then if you can do something about it, we do something about it. Can like, we some, can't yeah. do something about it, we just, you know. Mm. But yeah. don't you think, sometimes this is like a training for us human beings, you know. Uh. We need to have, you know, there's a saying, you can, you can uh. Google that, you know. Uh, patience, tolerance, and understanding mm -hmm. are the highest virtues. Mm -hmm. I always remember that. I know it's so mm -hmm. difficult. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by thinking of that, this thing you practice, it does help. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. that's like why sometimes. Practice, you know, yeah, when people have the you don't have the right understanding and wisdom, sometimes you can you can you can go the other way around. Can be counterproductive, and sometimes people use a lot of willpower. And they think that the, 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 the ego, with the ego, they think that they're going to beat, you know, <laughs> beat themselves down, you know, to beat, you know, I, I'm, I want to overcome this, I bear with the pain, you know. They say it's very important that it's always come back to your uh, 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 the wisdom that, you know, you, your ability, you, yeah. you, you're using your wisdom power, it's not using your willpower. You try to overcome things with willpower, you get to nowhere. If we can use willpower, I can tell you, the one with most willpower will get enlightened. We all will get enlightened long ago. Isn't it? Not willpower. You, you can't use willpower. A, 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 a training like, in life. Yeah. I think we have to, sometimes certain situation, we have to endure a bit too, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. This is, what I'm trying to say that it's not that we don't endure. Sometimes we have to be to be careful as well whether we are using willpower or come from our own ego, yeah, yeah. you know, to try to, 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 to endure things like, like with willpower to try to, you know, to, to, to beat ourselves, you know, like what, want to overcome with willpower can be counterproductive Maybe unless that we, we really come from the wisdom with the right understanding. The middle way. Thank you. Okay. Is <laughs> yeah. so any more questions or comments? Yes.
you mentioned that um, for us to practice, we should not, we should just observe ourselves and not try to control uh, the circumstances yeah. around us. Yeah. But how do we deal when it's say an external, another person trying to control us, telling mm. you, you should be this, you should be this, this mm -hmm. is not you. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Okay. So you just ignore the person. <laughs> it's every and sometimes day. I do like that. And when the person tell me something, I say, yeah, 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 it's okay. I do my way. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I know sometimes people try to control, you know. Then you know, then yeah, just okay. I say yes, 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 you know. I, okay. I mean, a good suggestion, you know. Then after that, I you know, I just do my way. <laughs> I mean, the most important thing, you don't try to control others because it's create lots of suffering for yourself. Is there any more questions or comments? Yes? That you shouldn't try to control others. You should be more accepting and tolerant of their mm. behavior. But how do you find a balance between that and, like, say, you know, if you feel like it would really help them and make their life a lot better if you help them to change something about them. You know, maybe. Um, mm. How do you kind of find a balance? With okay, that? this this why it's always come to you have to know yourself. You have to know your own limitation, because sometimes, like for example, where people come to me said that like sometimes they have friends that you know, they always come and tell them their problems, and sometimes. Some people like this person said to me that like sometimes it's a bit overwhelming for her. Like it's too much for her. And on, on one hand, she would like to help this person. On another hand, she find that she got sucked in. You know? So then I told her that, you know, that actually you also have to protect yourself. So we can only do what we can. If we find, you know, we try to be, you know, listen, you try to listen to the person. If you're not get affected and you not get sucked in, you don't buy in the person's emotions. And yeah, you, you can listen to give the person the support, the care, you know, the love. And, but if you find yourself that you've been sucking, and the whole day, you know, this person told me, thinking about the other person's problem the whole day, you know, I said, that is no good. So they said, again, you have to come, come back, you know, that your, your own wisdom, that you know how much you can take and what is your limitation. And if it's, if it's someone who, they're not like telling you any problems, it's more like um. they're just behaving in a certain way and, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to change mm. their behavior or like mm. they mm. kind of just don't see anything, but yeah. you feel like maybe if you try to help them, you could change something mm. that would make their life better. Yes, I mean, you can try, you know, it's for example, to me, like I, I, I would try, I would do my best to, to try, but if after... After I've been trying, you know, if the person, sometimes like, you know, that if the person can't see it, the person can't see it. And sometimes I come to a point that I have to accept the person is. If not, I feel it's, and then I, become, I suffer because I keep thinking about how the person behave. And, and, and actually, I, I, might, I myself suffer. So that's why it's much easier to change ourselves to accept the person as the person is, than to try to change the person. Like for example, like we, we have so many nuns in our monastery. If I try to change all the nuns, I tell you I've been very busy. I can't do that. I can only give them support. I can only give them advice. I can only give them guidance. Ultimately, they have to, they have to, they have to train themselves and I can't train them. That's why I keep telling people, someone asked me, how do you train your nun? I said, I never train my nun. I can't train them. They have to train themselves. It's just like we have to train ourselves as well. Thank you. Yeah. It's just like sometimes people bring their children, you know, like teenage um, girls and boys, and they have drugs problem. Then, you know, so, so I look at them, I said, you know, the first thing, I, I, the first thing, I look at the person and I said, I would love to help you. We all would love to help you and support you. But first of all, are you willing to help yourself? If the person not willing to help themselves, 
no matter what we do, it's not going to help. It's always have to come from that person. So I told her, I said, I can't help too if you're not willing to help yourself. We all would love to help too. That's why we also have to learn to let go as well. I know sometimes it's difficult. I think that I should help that person. And I find, oh, you know, I should help that person and da, da, da. And I, and, I'm, and I carry that person problem with me thinking about that all the time. And then who suffer? So then at the end, this also we have to let go. Any more questions or comments? So this question is uh, regarding myself. I would like to ask for some help in finding happiness, joy, and reassurance. I have recently lost three members of my family, including my dad. I feel overwhelmed with sadness. Okay, I have this experience. I lost my father after three months. I lost my brother. And I, I, the first one I lost is my mother. So after a few years, I lost my father and I lost my brother. Especially hit me much more is my father and my brother because within three months, I lost two members of my family and my mother. And I remember when I first, uh, when I lost my mom, at the first three, six months, I cry whenever I think of my mom. I cry. And because I feel that I have, I've lost this person in my life, until one day, I just, re I, just, I just realized that, you know, one day that, hey, actually, you know, why I'm looking at that I have lost this person in my life? Why don't I look at it the other way around? I have my mom for so many lives, so many, so long, you know, and I have this person in my life. You know, and s such a kind and compassionate person, and you know, I must have done lots of good things in my previous life to in order to deserve someone like that in my life. So actually, the moment when I switched up that, you know, thinking of I lost my mom, but I was thinking that actually I have this person, I have this wonderful person in my life. Actually, since that day onwards. Whenever I remember my mom, actually I have lots of joy and happiness because I'm very grateful. I'm very appreciative that I have this person in my life. So, and now I can tell you whenever I think of my mom, I don't feel sad anymore. And I feel really, you know, I feel that I have this person. The same thing like my dad, you know, I have this person in my life. So I always think of the good things you know, good thing of the good qualities of my 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 family members, my brothers, my my mom and my fathers. So when I think of the good qualities, actually I was rejoiced, I was happy because I'm focused on the good qualities. Then I don't feel sad anymore. But of course, it's okay at the beginning. You feel sad. It's fine to feel sad. You know, it's talking about sad. I remember someone told me that her niece that because she was told that you're not allowed to cry, you only can cry when someone die or someone sick. So, so when her niece, when, when her niece, you know, when she said, when her, her father, uh, you know, uh, her father, you know, visit the niece and then and, and her father leaving and then when the niece feel very sad, she laugh, she smile because she was told you can't cry. Actually, it's really unhealthy, you know, that not allow her to feel sad, not allow her to cry. So, and then she keep telling her sister, no, you, when I told her, and then she said, you have to like, allow your daughter to, it's okay to cry. Sometimes you feel sad. But you think of the good quality, you know. And also remember then, um, after that, the, my, when I lost my father, then my brother, and that really struck me really hard and I become more appreciative of being alive I remember I was in Thailand the moment I got up I said wow I'm still alive I was so appreciative 
แต่ s I remind myself anytime I die I will die anytime so you no know, each day to me is a bonus each day that I becomes very appreciative and a lot of things don't doesn't bother me anymore if you know that you're going to die tomorrow lots of things doesn't bother you isn't it so and and that I doing a lot of this mindfulness on death. I remind myself, and every morning that I feel so happy that I'm still alive, and that actually give me lots of energy and give me lots of joy as well. But being grateful that I'm still alive, being appreciative, you know, I'm still be able to have this body to practice. They say it's a matter of how you 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 your attitude, how you relate to things. Because I I can't change the fact that my these three members of my family pass away, that is a fact. They already you know they're not with me. But even though physically they're not with me, but they're all in my heart. So whenever I think of my, uh, uh my mom, my dad, and my brothers, I have lots a uh, lots of joys and happiness. So. And then the second question is, why do we want to hold on to something if it is will lead to lack of freedom and suffering? Because we don't know, we don't see. If we see it, we will not hold on to it, isn't it? Because we, that's why, that's why, that's why the, the the reason why we hold on to things because we we don't know. That's why sometimes like people ask me how to let go. I say you you can't just say let go, let go. I mean sometimes even though in in theory we understand that or oh, letting go, I holding on to this suffer, you suffer. But sometimes we don't even know what we are holding on to. Even sometimes we know that we are holding on to because of our our mental habitus is so strong because it's like a a, a habit. It's like an addiction. It's not easy to let it go. It's just like it's just like you know. It's just like an, a, a a drugs addict. We know that the drugs is no good, but you can't help it, isn't it? Because your your mind is not strong enough. You know, you you can't help it. You get pulled in again. That's why you have to recondition our mind. So we have to go against the stream. It's not easy. So we have to channel a new. A new, a new, a new, uh, a mental happy chair pattern. Like certain mental happy chair lead us to suffering. Then we have to recondition ourselves. It's just like you channel a new channel, but it's sometimes even the new channel if is is not deep enough. Sometimes we can find, for for example, from our own practice, I sometimes some of the things I don't do it for a long time, and sometimes I still fall back to the old. Pattern because of the channel is not deep enough. It's just like the water, you know. If it's not deep enough, it still flow back to the old channel. So we have to. All we need to do is just keep deepening and deepening and deepening. So when the channel is deep enough, and it will not, the water will not flow back to the old channel. It takes time. You know, it's it's not that you know. If we if we can if we can just just let go so easily, we all got enlightened, isn't it? Long ago, so but it's it's I mean it's not easy, but it's possible. That's why it's important that we have to develop the faith, the confidence in ourselves, that uh, we have the potential. It's possible to develop all these qualities, even those now we don't have this quality. But we can develop. Doesn't mean that now we don't have this quality. That means the rest of our life we don't, we will not, we will not have these qualities, the wholesome qualities, the positive qualities, the positive minds, uh, attitude. You know, we always can develop that. It's possible. So that is again, faith is important. We have the confidence in oneself is important. And the third one is a question from Pen Penang, Malaysia. If a person does things according to who they are in their own way, is it possible this could be irresponsible and reckless, even though they are happy? But that's why it's just like the Buddha said: there is a wholesome happiness and unwholesome happiness. If the unwholesome happiness leads us to more suffering. 
like something that is unskillful, you know, something that, you know, then, yeah, we, 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 got, we, we got a bit of happiness, you know, yeah, we've, uh, uh, we, we've been very greedy, we want to get what we, you know, getting what we want, and then we try to uh, uh, get what, uh, what we want on the expense of others. So, yes, the moment you get that, you have a bit of happiness. The Buddha never denying the kind of happiness come from one thing. But this kind of happiness will lead you to more suffering. The another kind of happiness, we, the, the Buddha called this a wholesome happiness. And this kind of happiness, like for example, the happiness come from meditation. The happiness come from listening to a Dharma talk. The happiness come from giving, you know, offering dana. And this kind of happiness that leads you to peace, leads you to calm. And that's why the Buddha said that don't afraid of the happiness that is leads you to peace and calm. So the Buddha's call this wholesome happiness. Of course, you know, that you give you a bit of happiness, but the kind of happiness that is, is a, a, a cause of the gross happiness and that leads you to more and more suffering. So when you feed the, the, our craving and it's grow, it's just like, it's just like, it's just like, it's just like the fire, you know. Like all our craving is just like we are on fire, you know, we're burning, it's all the burning, you know, fire. And if you keep adding fuel, it's keep burning. Then only when we stop adding fuel. So that's why when we do something like we sit in meditation, you know, something that is wholesome, that leads us to, that is a wholesome happiness, that leads us to peace and calm and stillness. And that also develop wisdom. Because we have, with the still mind, then you, this is where your, your, your insight uh, arises when, when, when our mind is still. So there is, yeah, because yeah, there, there is happiness, but this kind of happiness is unwholesome happiness. It's not wholesome happiness. So yeah, there's a three questions. So any more questions or comments? No? Then we can end. Okay. Okay. So good night everyone.